Let's ready to start. I'll eat it after. Do you want to move your mic where it should be? That was condescending. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. <laughs> I hate you. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Against All Odds podcast. Once again, I'm here with the second best guest in the world. Who's the first? Gucci. Mm. I'll take it. <laughs> Mimi Duggar. So uh, my fiance. We're back with another quarantine podcast. Um, today episode. Eight. Yes, this will be episode eight. So today we want to dive a little bit deeper into one topic. I think it's going to be like a kind of like a, I really don't know, just like a deep dive into this, into college soccer and like basically giving yeah, we're advice. Gonna focus, we're going to focus the discussion. Mm -hmm. One topic, the entire podcast. So if you guys are uh, wanting to play college soccer, you want to hear about this, hear my advice, uh, stay tuned. And if you guys want just a normal podcast, then I guess go to the, go to the next one because this will be kind of just one topic based. Yeah. We're going to try to switch off. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how see. Pe what you guys think. No let promises. Us know. No promises. Yeah. Just let us know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. we're, we're really trying to mix things up. So yeah. let's roll the intro and let's get started. Um, so once again, this podcast is sponsored by Chaos Soccer Gear. Chaos Soccer Gear is a young soccer brand that has a very cool Aztec or Mayan. I got to figure that out. I got to know which one it is. Mayan. I want to go with... No. You've been saying Aztec this whole time. Then it's Aztec. We're mm -hmm. going with Aztec. Aztec soccer ball is really cool. It's fairly priced, like 80 bucks, but it's very high quality. They also have like a soccer pump and some very cool like t-shirts, sweatshirts and stuff. And they're just really developing now to a bigger brand. So um, please go check them out at chaossoccergear.com. If you guys are watching on YouTube, the link will be in the description. And Mimi, do you want to spell chaos for us? C-H-A-O-S. Beautiful. Chaossoccergear.com. Okay. So the, the premise of this podcast, what I'm going to treat this as is I want to give advice to you guys about how to play college soccer. And I'm going to do this by basically teaching Mimi as if I'm telling Because I Mimi, know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I want to basically talk to you like I'm giving you advice on how to play college soccer, on how to create the highlight video, the CV, how to email the coaches, everything, mm -hmm. so that these guys can basically have, hear and listen into a full um, like advice, like it, uh, interview almost about how to play college soccer. Um, so we'll just start from the beginning and... Uh, and and just dive into this so you've never played college soccer it's surprising i know <laughs> <laughs> i haven't you, um never played college sports or anything you played some high school sports did some stuff like that mm -hmm. um so basically what are your do you have any questions just to start off on how to do it so i presumably am a that was a big word i don't know if i used it right <laughs> yeah so if i so say i'm like what is it senior Senior in high school, that's when you'd be applying to colleges? Yes. Okay, so how soon do I want to start thinking about college soccer? Do uh, I want to start thinking of it as like a freshman yes. before high school? Yeah, so I think I think ideally you should, freshman year, you should be kind of having the idea if you like soccer and if you want to play in college or not. Um, and if you want to play and you know that you want to be a pro, you want to play college soccer at mm -hmm. least, then I think ideally you should be starting to think about it. And and in that whole freshman year, I think that you should, uh, start doing stuff like start, <clears throat> start filming your games for the very first time. If you haven't already start filming your games, start even just asking people who have played college, get a little bit, you know, depth of a little bit of knowledge about it. Go to YouTube, watch people who are playing college right now, just to see what their daily schedules like, just kind of like do your research and start to dip your toes in that process. And, okay. and then, so freshman year, you should start just researching and researching and documenting yourself, filming your games. Okay. And, and if you can just start to make a highlight video, not that that freshman year highlight video is going to get you into college, but it's going to just give you some practice of how to make a highlight video and practice give your that. mom practice. Huh? I'll give your mom well, practice on is, recording. <laughs> yeah. She just filmed, but like I was the one who took all the footage and edited well, yeah, but I'm up. saying like, you don't want like the first video that your mom ever films of you to be yeah. like your important game. You yeah, know? True. Um, so yeah, so stuff like that. And then I think that if your games aren't being recorded by the team or the high school or whatever, then to back up and even buy a $200, um, HD camcorder that you can get at Best Buy, literally $200, the old, you know, what the parents will all have. I've seen some parents with iPads too, yeah, like I anything. Mean, you, you, yeah. Whatever. iPad 
camcorder or whatever. I mean, but you can literally go to Best Buy and get like a hundred dollar, two hundred dollar camcorder that, mm-hmm. will, that will film HD footage. And it'll be perfect. People watching this in a few years and be like, "What's a camcorder?" Yeah. <laughs> Um, same with the tripod. Why is he holding his hand like that? <laughs> I think they should always get a tripod because yeah. parents, a lot of times when they're filming and stuff happens, they just drop their hand automatically and look. So if they're just, all they have to do is just twist it to the left and to the right. I think that's a lot better. Um, so that's the, that's freshman year. I think it's very important with that. And then. Before we move on. Yeah. She's playing with the lighter. Should we? No, it's okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So the next question would be how, how young are college coaches looking because yeah. like at least when I was in high school there was like freshmen and sophomores who were like I'm committed to USC and everyone else was like what the heck so when like, they say they're committed to USC it's usually a verbal committing and like a, a commitment and that's like a coach being like they can say it like we want you to play here but it means nothing it's literally a handshake so that's just when there's like a really standout like young person yeah but it doesn't mean anything like it, it unless you put until you put pen to paper on your national signing mm-hmm. day which doesn't happen until senior year um, it doesn't, it just is a handshake. Well, how, how young do they look? Like, do they look at all the freshmen and the I sophomores? I mean, if you are in eighth grade and you are U S national team, U 13 and you're the top player, like maybe the top D one schools will be recruiting you, mm-hmm. but that is the less than 1%. Like okay. honestly, for the 90% of the people so that are, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but honestly for the 99% of the people that are watching this and want to play in college soccer, they will probably not start really looking at you until your sophomore year of high school. For okay. girls, it's a little bit earlier because they develop a little bit, you know, Our brains earlier. develop earlier yeah, too. Brains and everything. Yep. But like uh, you've seen some of the freshman guys in high school. They're 100 pounds. I was that guy, you know. Insert photo. <laughs> yeah. You're 100, 100 pounds. Shelly, she's... Oh. It's okay. She's just playing. <laughs> it's just a hundred pound, uh, you know, a hundred pound freshman and the colleges are going to look at you and pretty much be like, okay, we'll, we'll see how you develop, how you, yeah. how you, cause everything, a lot of things could happen in two or three years. So I think that whole freshman year is just building that up, getting used to creating a highlight video, starting to understand what college soccer is, all that stuff. Okay. So moving on from that, I'm a junior now. Yeah. Do I start contacting coaches or do I wait till my senior year? I think, no, I think you should not wait for your senior year. Even sophomore year, I think you can start. Sophomore year, start contacting coaches. Yeah. And at least I think before that even starts though, I think that in your sophomore year, sophomore to junior, but I think sophomore year is better. You should create a list. And like, if I was giving you advice right now, because people always ask, how do I know if I'm at the D1 level? How do I know if I'm at the D2? Like, what, what do I know? And my advice is like, have a goal, like have a list of schools that you're interested in and have it range from the top D1 school that you, your dream school, like mine was Stanford, to Stanford okay. soccer. <laughs> honestly, yeah. It was no way going to happen with grades or even soccer wise, honestly. Yeah. But it was there, you know, the dream reach school all the way down to Safeties. like- to like literally like Chemeketa College in Oregon, which is like a junior Shemekita. college. Yeah, which is like a junior college in Oregon. So I had that list. Yeah, that I mean, from, they, they say for everybody to do that when yeah. you apply to college, because even if you meet all the prerequisites for yeah. a college requirements, like you might not get in, you mm-hmm. know? So it's good to have like your reaches and then your safeties. Yeah, so I think build a list of like 50 schools, like five top D1 schools, five medium D1 schools, five top D2 schools, five medium D2 schools, D3, NAIA, junior college, community college, whatever, create this full list mm-hmm. and then and, and kind of like actually do research in it and not just be like, oh, I want to play here because I, it's the top school, but literally be like, where do you see yourself playing? And like maybe you can student. make like a spreadsheet with this and put like the con, if you get like contact emails, you yeah, know, put yeah, that yeah. in there. Exactly. That's huge. You can like mark if you have emailed or not. So do that like sophomore year to junior year. Yeah. Sophomore year to junior year. I like, I think having that list out, Stanford, Oregon State, University of Washington, Gonzaga, UC Davis, UC Irvine, and going down into D2s, uh, like uh, University of San Diego or University of California, San Diego, stuff like that, and going all the way down to D3s, you know, Pacific, and then going to NAIs, all that, and having the coach's name there, the coach's email there, and having a full spreadsheet of like 50 schools. Okay, so then when would you start going to like the college combine things? I think that you can start sophomore year. I think... I I don't think it's unreasonable for a sophomore to go to those ID camps and clinics because I think the earlier you go, you can always get on what people's does that mean? radar. You always, huh? say, you always say that. What does that mean? Camps and clinics. ID camp. What does that mean? It's It just means like identification. Like it literally clinic. is ID? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. So it's like it's the schools will have D1, D2, all these schools will have combines or tryouts pretty much where anybody can sign up. Usually you pay 200 to $500 or whatever. 
for a weekend or a yeah. week of playing games with other people who have just signed and up and paid. Did you, I don't know if you already said this, are there multiple schools at each of these ID camps or is it just for each school? Like there's both. Yeah. So okay. that's a good, yeah. So it might be thing. more worth your money if there are other coaches there. It's hard but because there's more, people. there's more people usually. Okay. Like, so I went to, I went to a couple, I went to like the UC Davis ID clinic and that was like a five day thing. It was just UC Davis. No other school was there. And I think total they had like 60 kids. And so how do smaller. you, how do you find out about these and the timing of them and how much they cost everything? All online. It's go, you go to okay. like, I would go to the UC Davis Aggies.com, you know, and then you go to their soccer site and then men's soccer, you can see their roster, you can see their schedule. And then on one of the tabs will be ID, ID camps, clinics, combine, whatever it's called, whatever they want to call it, mm -hmm. it's going to be there and they'll have their dates, sign up, link, everything. Okay. And so I think you can start going sophomore year for like some schools that you kind of want to get on the radar. But, and that's, I think that's if like money is no issue for you. Yeah. And if go, you've already developed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But if you are a sophomore who's a hundred pounds, you know, hasn't yeah. really developed yet. It could um, work against you. Uh, yeah. Could it? I think it could, but I think for the most part, people just kind of forget, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a terrible sophomore year and all of a sudden you come in senior year and you're a beast at this ID mm -hmm. clinic or whatever, they're not going to be like, well, you know, two years ago he was small and scrawny and, or he had no skill at all. I think it's, it, it's only going to help you to go to these things. But I think if you are struggling or not even struggling, but like, okay, spending $500 every weekend for these camps, isn't, I can't afford that. So how many, off. how many should you do if like money wasn't a factor, if you could every afford single it? weekend possible, all of them, I would go to every, if, if money was no uh, like issue at all, I would go every single weekend ever. So but, just try to get noticed as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, this, like I said, it's not going to hurt you to go to these. You're not going to go there and people are going to be like, one school is going to be like, oh, this guy's trash. And then tell other schools, oh, don't ever recruit Matt Sheldon. You know, it's never going to be like that. Okay. And, and how important, because I think a lot of people in high school don't realize this until they're like actually trying to get into college. How important is school, is like schoolwork and academics? It's huge. To getting in. Like, cause it's I know, huge. I know a lot of, I've heard college coaches be like, oh, I love this guy, but like his SAT score sucked, Yeah. you know? And like, they get really pissed off because they might want you, but if you're not trying hard in school, they can't let you, you know, they can't get you. Mm -hmm. It's huge. And people think that like, yes, if you are the top player in the country, and whatever, and you have a 2.8, yes, the top schools can work their magic to get you in. Yeah, they'll get you tutors, they'll yeah. help you, but if you can't get into the school. Even that, but like, but but that, that if you're the, if you were literally the school is drooling over, you're the top recruit, they'll find a way to get you in the school, you know? But if, even if for it's me, like, even if, if it's it like, <laughs> even if it's like, okay, we'll put you in this junior college for a year, we'll get your grades up, we'll give you tutors, everything, they'll find a way. But for, like I said, for the 99% of people that want to play in college soccer, they don't have schools like UCLA and all these people that are like drooling over them, you know? So if you have the grades to get in on, on your own, it just is so much helpful for coaches because then they're looking at you too of like, oh, even if you, if sometimes a player will come in and they have this amazing player, mm -hmm. but if you can't make the grades to stay there, then you're going to be ineligible to play. And now they're wasting scholarship money on you for someone who can't even play and is going to drop out. And so, so to like, make it easier to get in, get as best yeah. test scores you for can. For example, when I went to the UC Davis ID camp, and within the first day, like uh, Dwayne, the head coach came up to me and he, he's, he really liked how I played. He really was interested in me. And he's such what he's like, you're Matt Sheldon. Yeah. Cause you have the numbers or whatever. I was like, yeah, Matt Sheldon. He goes, okay. Okay. Um, senior, right? I'm like, yeah, senior. He goes, what's your GPA? That was the third or second question he asked me. Wow. And I said, 4.2 weighted 3.85 unweighted. And he's like, what's your SAT score or ACT or whatever. And I gave it to him, whatever it was. ACT is like 31. No, <laughs> it was like 31. And he was like, good. he literally was just like, oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah. And then, but if I would have said, oh, I have a 2.4. Or he, I haven't taken it. Yeah. He'd probably been like, you know what? Matt Sheldon's right on that border of like, do I want to invest all this time energy for him not to like actually be a part of the school and to fail out? Mm -hmm. But since I had that good grades, so he's like, oh yeah, I can get him in here and he's going to be able to flourish at the school and be eligible to play. So it's huge. Um, but anyway, going back now, like sophomore year, yes, you can start going to those ID camps and clinics if money's no option. If it's money's tight, I'd hold off. Honestly, I would hold off. Is there any way for these ID camps to help out people who cannot afford? Yes. The fee? It's a little bit like kind of like not talked about that much, but they can waive the ID 
fee for you. And that happens a lot. Like I've had that wave for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I went to the second UC Davis ID camp. They wanted me to come back. And I think they waived the the fee for me. They're like, yeah, come back. We want to see you play again. This was like six months later. Mm -hmm. See if you're the same player, all that stuff. We'll waive the fee for you. We'll give you a player to stay with for the weekend or whatever. Um, but they did that all for me, but that they only do that if they're really interested in you. Or like if you have a big resume, you know, you're coming from a big academy team and you like say, I can't afford it. I'm really interested in your school. They can usually waive it for you. But uh, it's kind of like up to the school, up to like a lot of the like you never know. Some schools might be like, no, we can't do that. Some schools mm-hmm. be like, for sure we can do that. It's a little bit like kind of like you never know. OK. And then are there are there different routes? Like if you don't do the ID camp route, is there another way? Like- yeah. Yeah. What what are the other routes? So I think so. So sophomore year, like I said, to not do the ID camp or clinics, I think the next thing with your list of schools, the spreadsheet you talked about, like with all the schools all listed out, the coach's name, the coach's email, the coach's phone number, the uh, ID dates Mm -hmm. for all that stuff. You can start having that spreadsheet to see everything in one place. Sophomore year, I think is a good time to start sending out, you know, a little, couple emails. Because if you email the same coach, you know, five times over the course of um, your high school career, they're going to be like, wow, he's actually really interested and wants to come to the school. Or he's really annoying. <laughs> Just kidding. Five times in a week? Yeah, they'll yeah. be like, you're annoying. Five times in your a year, five times in your career of high school, they'll be like, no, he's interested in the school. He wants to play here. He's not just one of those kids who's sending out an email to every single school. Yeah. And you have a YouTube video with how to write the email, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So real quick though, for the email, when you write into these schools, it's better to write 10 very customized, well-written emails out to these schools and be like, hello, coach Schaefer. My name is Matt Sheldon. I'm a junior at, you know, Lincoln high school. I have actually came to watch UC Davis play when they played at Oregon state. Um, it was a tough loss for you guys, but I, I really liked your style of play. You know, uh, I, it's a dream of mine to attend UC Davis. I'm a mathematic, uh, student. I want to have a STEM program like that. And I know UC Davis has great mathematics programs, great engineering programs. Mm -hmm. So it's a dream of mine to attend there, not only for the school, but I really like the way your style of play. I like your aggressive attacking, you know, play or whatever. If you write an email like that, you'll get a response from a coach like nine times out of 10. So flatter them. Not, not, (laughs) not not flatter them. (laughs) Customize it. I know I'm saying make that, make it. Yeah tailored yeah. to that situation mm-hmm. and like kind of like just a little nugget stuff like Bribe that them. and be like, I noticed like, I see that you guys got second place in the league this year. I think that's awesome. I've I, I, coming from a winning culture at high school. I, I want to go in and extend that winning culture in college. <laughs> Since I always win. I want to go to a winning school. Yeah. So. <laughs> um, just little, little sentences like that, you know, and, and don't overdo it, but let them know you've done your research. You know who they're talking to. You, mm-hmm. you say their name. You don't say, Hey coach, you know, you say their name. It's well written. You've, you've proof Reddit. There's no spelling mistakes. Um, and then attach your CV and highlight video. And I've talked about the highlight videos. I have videos on that videos on the CV. Um, but again, the more professional your highlight video, the more professional your CV, the more professional your email looks. If you have a good package of everything, it's, you're going to get a response. Even if it's like, Hey, unfortunately we're all full with forwards this for this recruiting class You're, you'll get a response but if it's like hey coach i'm interested in your school uh here's my highlight video here's my cv you know it's and they can just tell that you sent that to every single coach out there so sending 10 customized well-written emails that your mom has helped you proofread you know and you've like asked somebody else who's playing college soccer to say like any tips about how you can customize it or whatever or watch my youtube videos where i literally show you my emails that i've sent Mm -hmm. out to colleges and kind of like built it around that sending 10 of those is better than sending 100 that you just mass send out yeah so start doing that start testing the water, sending out emails to schools. Make sure your email's not embarrassing either. (laughs) Yeah. Make sure that's a good point. Yeah. If your email is gummy drop 69 at (laughs) gmail.com, change it, go get Matt Sheldon at gmail.com, whatever, and, and make it professional. Because I, even I've had emails like that. People even like have usernames and they'll like comment on his posts and stuff (laughs) with like the weirdest usernames. Yeah. Yeah, so so be prof- professional. It's what professional. was that one that you had that was so weird? It was like it was a really serious comment. It was like, yeah. "Thank you so much. This was very helpful." It's something to do with a turtle. It's like turtle dick. Or something. Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yeah, 
<laughs> so, but it was like a really serious. So like, if your email is t- turtle dick yeah. at gmail.com, he's gonna change. Be, he's going to be watching. Change <laughs> your email before you email the coaches yeah. and make it just as professional as possible. Because even though it might sound a little bit too professional about how you would normally talk, even in person, coaches are going to respect that. Okay. And so if you go that route and you are sending coaches your email with the CV and resume and they like it, are they always going to have you come in to an ID camp like from that? Or would they ever sign you like without seeing you play in person? So it depends on how honestly how good you are. So like, for example, uh, and, and this level of the school, like so if you are the U.S. U.S. youth national team leading goal scorer and you send an email out to UC Davis and say like, Hey, I want to attend your school. Like mm-hmm. you don't even, if you're at that point, you don't have to customize it. You'd be like, Hey coach, I want to attend your school. They'll say like, okay, you know, let's get you in here. You know, like uh-huh. we, we, we are willing to give you this much scholarship, but for again, 99% of people who are watching this. Most of the time when you send that email, they'll say, thank you for the interest in our school. You know, we'd love to watch you play. If they are interested, they're going to be like, we, if let us know if you're ever playing in our area, you know, let us know if you're playing any big showcase tournaments. Uh, here's our ID camps and clinics and stuff. If you can attend one, that'd be great. And pretty much let's stay in contact, you know? Okay. So it's going to, it's going to be very open-ended. So like that. would that be more worth your money if you are limited on money to go to an ID camp, an ID camp where you've already contacted the coach? Yeah, you, you're literally, you're killing it, baby. Yeah, 100%. I kn- <laughs> okay. It's 100, it's, I really don't know any of this. Like I'm yeah. actually asking. It's kind of like, it's the same as with a job pretty much too. Yeah. Okay? So if they say, like, if they send you an email and say like, Matt, we are extremely interested in you. We really enjoyed your highlight video. We would love to see you in person. And, and, and you know you're not going to be in Santa Clara or you're never going to be in that area. And they're like, we really want you to attend an ID camp so we can take an in-depth look at you. And then they're like, oh, and we can waive it, the fee for you. A hundred percent. I'm investing in myself, saving up for that plane ticket, going down there and going to the ID camp. Mm-hmm. But if the email is like, hey, player, you know, like very like cut and paste or like, hello, thanks for the interest in our school. Here's our ID camps and times, you know, it's, it, you can just tell it's just a copy and pasted email. Mm-hmm. I would be like, okay, that's there. It, definitely not, uh, not, I'm not ruling it out, but that's obviously not as much interest as, not as worth the money. Yeah, exactly. Again, okay. if you have unlimited money, I'd attend all of them. But, and for 99% of the people out there, I would attend the camps that are showing interest in you. And again, that you'll find just like jobs and everything, Stanford most likely is not gonna, even if you send the same email, same highlight video, same CV, you're probably not gonna get as much interest from Stanford than you are from a division three school. And like to show you that, like I sent my emails out to everywhere, didn't even get a reply from Stanford. Didn't so get, that can, the responses can be a good like measure yeah. of where you are. And, and don't at the same time though, if one school doesn't reply to you, don't be like, oh, they're, they're not interested at all. Because I sent an email to Oregon State, didn't get an email, didn't get an email back at all. Attended an ID camp, didn't get noticed at all. Attended a second ID camp where there was multiple schools, and Oregon State was one of them. And all of a sudden, on that third try around, interest popped up, and they're like, "Wow, we, you know, we're very interested in you." And I, they actually ended up because they really can't watch everybody. Yeah, it's and, and like, so like, don't be discouraged yeah. about it, but at the same time, be smart with where you spend your time and energy. But like, for example, I sent out emails to Stanford, and they said. They didn't even reply. University of Washington didn't even reply. Oregon State didn't reply at first. You know, um, UC Davis replied, "Oh yes, we like your highlight video. We, you're definitely the type of player that we would want to recruit. We want to take a closer look at you." And that's why I flew down to UC Davis um, to go to their ID camp um, instead of going to like University of Washington. You know, because mm-hmm. like they same thing. They showed a little bit of interest. I sent an email to uh, University of San Diego, University of California, San Diego, the D2 school. And they said, we're very interested in you. Again, we would love to see um, in person. UCSD is D2? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So they were very interested as well. But then I I was going to actually go to an ID camp for them after UC Davis. It was like a month or two later. Um, but UC Davis had already shown a ton of interest. I was also getting interest from Oregon State at that time, Gonzaga. So I kind of stopped talking to the D2, D3 schools as much. And then Santa Clara, I think, I, or not Santa Clara, sorry. Um, 
what's the UC, what's the Santa Cruz? Santa Cruz. I sent an email to UC Santa Cruz, which was a division three school. I sent the email with the highlight video and they said that their email back was Matt. We are extremely interested <laughs> in you. Um, we loved your highlight tape. We'd be, we'd love to have you down here for an ID camp. Let us know about your game schedules. So as you can see, as I'm dropping down the level of play, did you ever go there? No, like see it. They have a field that just like overlooks like the whole coast. Really? It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. But again, like I, I did it as like backups. Yeah. And then once I started getting interest from my kind of like top D1 schools, I was, I kind of like, I didn't close the door on those schools, but I stopped replying as much. And I kind of, I kind of kept it open ended. And I kind of, I even replied to the uh, Santa Cruz coach. I said, Hey coach, whatever. Um, I'm very interested in, I'm still very interested in your school right now. I'm also being recruited by Oregon state and UC Davis, I just set it straight up to even show like I am a D1 level player. Mm -hmm. um, I'm being recruited by them. Uh, to be honest, I it's my dream to play D1 college soccer. However, if it doesn't work out, I would 100% be interested in attending your school. And they replied, keep us updated with it. We're very interested in you because it just shows them that you're keeping the door open. You're interested. You're being honest. You're being yeah. honest. And you're also showing them at the same time, look, I'm a high level player that's being recruited by D1 schools. Mm -hmm. So Again, you're kind of sending out the emails, gauging the interest and everything. And uh, and that would be like sophomore, junior year type stuff. Sending out very customized emails, sending the highlight video, the CV, doing all that work and making it all professional as possible. And then in the spreadsheet, even kind of gauge the interest, you know, like even have a column like interest out of 10, 10, 8, 4, 0, 0, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And again, don't be discouraged. Like my first round of it, I think I went like a month or two without getting a reply. So it's kind of like, again, balancing the being annoying versus being persistent. Yeah. Yeah. It's a hard, it's a fine line. It's a fine line. Yeah. If you are going to an ID camp and you're signed up to go, do you submit your, your highlight video and your, your CV or do they just not know anything about the people coming in? Um, well, it could be both. I mean, you can be, have no highlight video, no CV at all. And I mean, they're just, they accept everybody. So like you could attend uh, ID camp for one of these schools. But it would benefit me if I were to like, do you know, like, do they give you the, in the contact for the coaches that are going to be there? So you can co contact them ahead of time and be like, Hey, look, I'm coming to this combine or ID camp, whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, this is my name. This is where I play. And this is my video, whatever. Yeah. Like, do you do that? Or do you just show up? Um, I, I mean, you could just show up. Like there's no rules. Like literally like you could, if you wanted to, and I don't think this is smart, but you could just pay for it say name, last name, email, send it, and you can attend straight up, mm -hmm. you know? But I think it is. And sometimes they do ask, let, get, let us know where you've played, send a CV if you have one, send a highlight video if you have one, um, send a headshot sometimes so they can have like picture and everything. Um, and sometimes like they won't ask at all, just name, whatever. And then you can go out of your way as well, email the coach directly by looking on the website or email the recruiting email, whatever. And say like, hey, I'm attending this camp on in June, and I did that uh, at UC Davis and some other camps. I said, hey, I'm I'm looking forward to attending this ID camp. Um, here's my high, uh, like basically, I'm just looking forward to attending it. I'm a Matt Sheldon senior, all the normal email, mm -hmm. highlight video, CV, and I didn't. I got a reply from like UC Davis or something that was like, oh, we're very lo we're looking forward to having you, but it was kind of like cut and paste, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think it's always worth it because they'll, they will take a look at it real quick. And then even if they don't reply, they see Matt Sheldon, they see your name, you know, it's like kind of like getting ingrained into their yeah. mind and, uh, and they'll see it there. But if, again, if you're sending an email every single day and you are annoying this coach, you're going to be ingrained in their mind, but you're going to be gonna ingrained. Be an X through your face yeah, exactly. You're going to be ingrained <laughs> as like someone who's annoying. And if they, if they think you're annoying through email, they're going to think you're annoying if you have to play for them. Yeah. You know? And also this is just like a small thing, but I've gone to like combines with you where we've been like on the yeah. coach's side. And this is just a small thing, but like if in your headshot, your head's shaved and then at the combine you have like dreadlocks, like it's <laughs> going to be really hard yeah. to find you right away. So I would just say like, make your headshot like really professional and clear and like current. Yeah. Because like guys, their hair changes a lot. They cut it, you know, just like a small thing. Like yeah. you want to look like what your headshot looks like. Cause that's what they're going to be looking at. Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, they're like, where's that blonde kid? And like <laughs> you dyed your hair. Like he's yeah. not going to be able to find you, you know, a hundred percent, just a small thing. Yeah. And then, um, so once you get replies back and you get offers or verbal offers, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever the first stage of offers is. Um, yeah. 
how does that go? And like, how do you, I know there's no rule about choosing. Like there's always kids ask you like, which one should I choose? But like in your honest opinion, like what do you think would be more beneficial for you to choose if you have multiple? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And first of all, I don't want to, cause this was, I remember even going through high school, like about this and sending emails out. I didn't know. It's like, am I just going to send off this highlight video or CV? And are they just going to send me like a, an offer straight up? Like how's the scholarship work at all? Like how does the verbal offer work? And even if like the school's very, very interested in you, they're still going to want to meet you or talk so to you. So it takes at a while. Oh, at least like even if you're overseas, talk to you on the phone, do something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so it does, it's going to be a, a while. You're not going to send off one email and then get a, an offer again, unless you are U.S. youth national team, like top goal scorer, stuff like that. Um, so when do the verbal offers come in? So How usually, early can they do that? For, again, for 99% of the people that want to play college soccer, you're going to send that email. You're going to get some interest from some schools. You're going to let them know about the showcase tournaments you're attending, you know, hopefully that they, and they'll either watch you play in a showcase tournament or they will watch you play locally in a game. You know, like, let's say I'm going to Oregon State. Oregon State comes and watches some of the top club games, some of the top high school games, and they'll do some scouting as well. Um, and then or I will go and attend like their ID camp or clinic. Either way, they 99% of the time they want to see you play in person just a little bit, just to see what you look like, you know, cause sometimes you can plea your video can be a little bit deceiving for worse or for better. So they want to kind of like just see you in person. Most of the time they'll talk to you in person. They'll talk to your coach. They'll talk to like, you know, kind of do some research of their own. So this will happen usually through like junior ish year. Yeah. It could go early as sophomore, sophomore year up to senior year. Okay. So this is like, this is where it kind of like bleeds into each other where it's like, sometimes these coaches like will go and talk to sophomores and just be like, Hey, you know, I'm want to introduce myself. I'm the coach of this or whatever. Um, we like how you play, you know, ask some questions to get to do some face to face. We're interested in you. We'll stay in contact. Um, sometimes after one ID camp or whatever, they love a player and they'll come up to you and be like, we'd love to, you know, have you come visit our school, uh, official visits, stuff like that. Um, but it's always, it's usually even, even if they're super interested, they're like, yes, we're very, very interested in having you. We'd love to have you come visit our school. We'll do an official visit, you know, get you out here and, and show you around, uh, the school. And, mm-hmm. and then usually once you go and visit is when they'll give you the offer and stuff. But, um, like that, that's like another thing. So like once you, like for me coming now, I went to some ID camps, I sent out tons of customized emails. I was getting interest from a lot of schools. I think going into my senior year of high school, um, I had UC Davis that was very interested in me mm-hmm. and they were pretty much saying like, yes, we, we are definitely looking at you for the 2000 and they're D1. And, yeah. And they're D1 Oregon state hadn't shown any interest yet. Gonzaga hadn't shown any interest yet. I had uh UCSD that was interested, but they wanted to see me to combine. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll hopefully attend one in the winter or do something. And that was D2. And then what D2. about Oregon state and Gonzaga? What are those? D1, D1 as well. Okay. And then I had uh, UC Santa Cruz that was D3 that was like, we were very interested. And then I had uh, a local school Pacific, which was D3 as well. Um, but they were very Is interested. That, are there multiple Pacific? Yeah, there's one in California. Okay, too. But yeah, it was Pacific. And then there was like Warner Pacific as well. That was like NAI. People need to get their own name. <laughs> but there's an the NAI school that was in Oregon that was interested. I just knew those coaches through like Mike. Uh, local high school coach and stuff mm-hmm. and, I, and I was talking this is a, this is another way to talk uh, so you can do there's like the routes the collegiate yeah. game emails is one do like cold calling and cold emailing then there's attending the ID camps and clinics is like the second way then there's being scouted and recruited through showcase tournaments and, and, and them coming and looking at you or sending their your schedule. And what exactly are showcase tournaments? It's going to be like a, a big tournament where it's like local club teams from all over the country or the region or even the state or wherever are going to come and play just a tournament. Like they'll play four games over the weekend and just, it's like round robin. So it's robin. not like a part of their season. It's just like a weekend of games yeah, for the yeah. coaches to see. Mm-hmm. And you have to pay for those? Yes. The club will pay that for, for those or like you'll pay through whatever, but yeah, the club or you, each player or whatever will pay for it. And how go. many of those do people usually do? Or I, my do? club went to, I think my sophomore or I think sophomore year we went to like one and then my junior year we went to like three or four and my senior year we went to like one or two. And do you think that those are like that beneficial? Like, did you hear back? It was hard because my team wasn't that good. Okay. So 
it's very beneficial for the top teams. It's vi- that's so the, you want to win the showcase if you're tournament. In, if you're on like a top DA team or you're in a top ECNL team or a top club team in your state or whatever, mm-hmm. and you're going to those tournaments and getting second, third place, first place, and doing really well, then it's going to be that's like your number one way of getting recruited. Okay, but if you're like me, who we would go there and lose three out of the four games, not make it into the the playoff rounds at all, I didn't get interest ever from a showcase tournament, but that was the main form of recruiting for a lot of players. But I was in a unique situation where I would just wasn't on that good of a team. Um, so yeah, so the showcase tournaments are big. So you're kind of doing it all. You're, you're, I always think of like planning, you're planting tons of seeds and one of them is going to go and become this big tree. Mm-hmm. So I'm cold calling, I'm going to showcase tournaments, I'm going to the ID clinics and camps. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to my, my club coach and my high school coach. And I'm saying, look, I have interest to play in college soccer because your connections are great. You know, I would talk to my high school coach and club coach and be like, I have interest to play club, college soccer. Do you have any connections or links into college teams college coaches that i can Mm -hmm. talk to that you can put in a good word for me and and that's how i got like some of the nai and d3 kind of like uh interest is because i my high school coach played at warner pacific so he pretty much was like yeah i know the warner pacific coach so that route would be connections Mm -hmm. so that was like the fourth route yeah and so like uh unfortunately for me i i didn't have any connections into d1 schools so all of my connections were into D3 or NAI schools, which was good backups to have and good interest to have and kind of gave me confidence when I knew Warner Pacific was interested, Pacific was interested and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But it just, unfortunately, again, same with the showcase tournaments, that didn't pan out for me to be a good opportunity. Okay. And this might be a stupid question, but are you more likely to be, I guess, like, given an offer or looked at from a school that you're like close to. Yeah. Yeah. Because I know at least like when you were at Davis, the coaches would always talk about players they really liked, you know, in Sacramento because Mm -hmm. they could probably go see them really easily. So is that like an advantage? Like, should you like focus more on colleges that you're close to? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I I do think so because it's like, uh, I think that you should for sure focus on those unless mm-hmm. you like at the same time though, like if I had no interest of playing in Oregon yeah. or whatever, and I was like, I'm getting out of Oregon. I don't care if I play soccer or not. I just want to get out of Oregon. Mm-hmm. Then don't focus on it. But for me, I was like, I want to play at the highest level I can. I don't care if that's in Idaho. I don't care if that's in Oregon or California. Ideally, I want to go down to California, but it doesn't really matter that much to me, like location wise. Okay. So like, yeah, it is more likely though that you're recruited by a local school. Yeah, because it just seems like they're scouts. Like sometimes they don't like disperse that yeah, far. Because it's you know like the mean? same thing. A lot of schools, unless you're the top D1 schools, they're not going to have huge budgets. Like I know a lot of these schools yeah. that these coaches, they have to do their recruiting and their trips on their own dime. So mm-hmm. they're not going to be traveling to every single city, you know, to do this. So they rely a lot on the local kids. They rely a lot on their connections to other clubs <laughs> and other stuff. But yeah, so it's like, so it's connections. Uh, and, and also they say sometimes like a kid will just fall in your lap. You know, it's like for me with Santa Cruz, if I would have attended there, I would have just fallen on their lap. You know, yeah. I, I would have reached out to them. Yeah. So it's kind of like the same thing. They're looking for top players, but at the same time, it's their people too. They have lives, they have busy work jobs. So yeah, they are, do, they're basing their recruiting off of the local talent, their connections and the kids that really do just fall in their lap. Um, um, so how does the, what, okay. What exactly is a verbal offer? And like, what does it mean? Yeah. So basically when I was heading into my senior year now, it was like in the fall, uh, I had a verbal offer from, or it wasn't a fully verbal offer, but it was like, cause it, it, sometimes they'll, schools will be like, yes, we're going to commit a verbal commitment to play with each other. You know, or like, you're going to play for our school. So that just means like a promise before the actual, like when, when is the signing day? It's uh, like, there's like a day, right? Yeah, it's a national, yeah, national signing day. And it's like in February, January of your okay, senior so year. So they just want you to commit so that you can't commit to It's a pinky else. promise. Okay. It's like, okay, we're going to pinky promise <laughs> together that we're both going to, that you're going to come here. Yeah. But a lot, what's scary though sometimes is kids will rely on that thinking, oh, I'm committed to play here, you know? So they're not committed to you. Or you're not committed to them either. So like for you could you if i was a school if i was uc davis and you were here and we pinky promised we had the verbal commitment you could any day just be like ah no stanford wants me later or i could be like ah no we got another forward later you know so it doesn't really 
mean anything. <laughs> yeah. And it's hard because the verbal commitment can like have a different level of strength depending on the school and the, and the coach. Some coaches only give out verbal commitments if they are 100% going to offer them the commitment, you know? And what, like, what form does this come in? Do they email you and say this? It's just verbal. Literally verbal. They yeah. just say over the phone. Yeah, over the phone, maybe through an email, but like so there's even not if, even like sometimes you don't even have like a like documentation of it. Like it just happens on the phone. Yeah, I mean they could email it to you, but like in the email, it's like this is a verbal commitment. You know? Do you sign the verbal? No, commitment? no, it's it's. I'm not it joking. It's like a pinky promise. That's scary. Yeah, but see, it's weird because I feel like in the professional world, I feel like they're more like you take them more seriously. Yeah. Like you don't like verbally commit to like multiple. Well, they, they do that verbal commitment because you can't sign into your senior year. So yeah. it, the coaches are doing that. They want to do that because they want to almost like guilt trip the players in there. So it's like, uh, like if I said we did the pinky promise, you know, and then now you're going to feel bad if you start talking to other schools. Right. Okay. But so if I do verbally commit to a school, should I still look secretly and have a backup? Plan? Yes. hundred percent. It's, so don't rely on the verbal no, commitment. No, because I've heard many, many stories of verbal commitments like that. And then all of a sudden, like UC Davis, like I'm the school and I'm a, a forward falls on my lap that's 10 times better than you, better resume, everything. And I like 10 times more. And I only have money for one person. The, I'm throwing you, honestly, I'm throwing you out, you know. Hey. I'm, I'm going for the better person. We're engaged. <laughs> <laughs> so that, the verbal, it's, it's scary because I know I have seen players uh, rely on that verbal commitment as if it was a real signed, sealed contract. Yeah. And then they, I've, I've watched them get screwed. So don't like post on your Instagram that you committed somewhere. Yeah. I mean, m- more often than not, it, it will work out, but I have seen players get completely screwed because they relied on the verbal commitment. They closed doors with other schools. Mm-hmm. They stopped talking, they stopped searching. And then the school they were interested in, cause just as easily I could get fired. Yeah. And then a new coach comes in and then you don't even have a verbal commitment with that coach. It's a new coach. Is there always going to be a verbal commitment before like of signing? No, because I didn't have a verbal commitment at UC Davis. So it was how did like, you know that you were going to be signed? They said, look, we, so basically when, in the fall of my senior year, they said that we are, we are very interested in you for the recruiting class of 2011. You know, we, we are very highly interested in you. We're going to get you into the school. So they did the, uh, the, um, the wave almost of like my, I had good enough grades and, and ACT scores to pretty much get in there, but they basically said, we'll get you into the school. Well, you definitely did if I got in. <laughs> <laughs> so they, um, they have the power to pretty much get players that they want to get accepted in the school. So I've always wondered this, do athletes actually have to apply like the normal way to get into a school? Ta- again, the 1% don't, yeah, I mean, top athletes, they don't probably have to apply. So all the schools that you're talking to, that you're emailing, who show a little bit of interest, are you going to like actually submit an application to those schools? I did, yes. And again, 99% of the people will submit an application for those schools. And if depending on the level, you could have a head coach like really help you out and kind of like walk you through the process, you know, um, you could have like them if you are like UCLA, UCLA and the, you know, you have this dumb kid or whatever that has no idea how to do it. I'm sure some behind the scenes stuff yeah. works that they'll get them in or forge some form of the I've application. I've always wondered that because the college application process is like no joke. Like yeah. it is. I had a whole, I had a class on it my senior year. Like that's all we did in that class the whole year was college apps. Yeah. And like all these athletes were like, I just got into UCLA. Like I'm, I'm committed to like Stanford and I'm like, do they even have to apply? Like how does this <laughs> yeah. work? And so like for me, I applied, I applied to UC Davis, but I was, I was guaranteed to be admitted. If you got signed. No, no, no. Even before that. So they basically, I don't know the exact wording that they used, but it was, I was going to be, they basically sent me an email. They're like, okay, we're going to waive the application process for you. So I, I could send in my application, but no matter what, I was going to be let in. in. So for the essays, I, my mom was I freaking out. I want to read your, I want to read your college my, essay. My mom was freaking out. She's like, no, that's not, you know, again, it's not a hundred percent. Cause it's true. It wasn't a hundred percent. They just sent that in an email. Yeah. And again, you never know, but, um, But I could have written, my name is Matt Sheldon and I like to play soccer and I would have been admitted into UC Davis. That's so annoying. (laughs) Yeah. So, okay. So I, they, I got waved through. So at that time I kind of knew that they were very, very interested in me to come play, but 
again, I kept on talking. I kept on talking to Oregon State, Gonzaga, and basically through some, sh- sh- not showcase tournaments, but them doing their own scouting. And I think an ID camp with Oregon State, uh, I gained interest from Oregon State and Gonzaga. And also the more interest you get from other schools, the more uh, bargaining power you can get for your scholarship. Because not every kid's on 100% scholarship. It's like you have 11 full scholarships and you kind of break it up with yeah. kids. So if you go to, if I went to UC Davis, and I did this with UC Davis, I said, look, I'm very interested in, in attending your school. Um, however, Oregon State is talking to me now. Like mm-hmm. I, the coach, I'm going on an official visit to Oregon State. And, uh, and it, that 100% put a little fire under the coach's butt at UC Davis to be like, okay, we need to recruit this nice thing. Yeah. Fire (laughs) under the butt. Yeah. (laughs) I've never heard that. And you kind of say like, look, you know, I really want to attend UC Davis, but this is what Oregon state's offering for their scholarship. Can you do any better than that? Cause I want to attend UC Davis. And are you always going to get a scholarship? No, you can be offered, you can be offered a a full scholarship, which is very, very rare. And most likely for the 99% of people, they're not going to get a full scholarship at the D one level. At other levels, there's different rules, um, but most likely, uh, most people coming in will have a partial scholarship, or they'll get some form of FAFSA combined with a scholarship, combined with whatever, uh, and they'll and they'll get a, a roster spot. And then there's people that are just roster spots that they have to pay their own way. You know, um, I think uh, like Gonzaga offered me a roster spot, so they said we can't give you any scholarship, but we, you will be on the team. So you're sco- you're scholarship is based upon like your skill yeah yeah like the better you are the higher scholarship yeah so the get. the top recruit coming into uc but what if that top recruit is like a billionaire um like do they also look at your income yeah i'm sure they do i mean i'm, I'm sure if there's a billionaire kid coming in but at the same time if that's their top recruit they're gonna be like like it's it's all like it's, what if there's some kid out there who you know his parents don't make that much money but he's a really good soccer player like, are they more likely to give him a higher scholarship? Um, I it's it's, it's all tough. Like, it, it, and okay. I know they'll, they'll they'll work a lot, like getting FAFSA and other forms and grants and loans to help the kid out and stuff. But it's it's pretty much like the more they want you, the more scholarship that will go, and the the better they think you are, and you ha- and you earn it too. So like every single I was gonna year, say, so it's contingent on okay. every single year at UC Davis, my scholarship doubled or or increased up to the point where I was getting a majority like completely covered Mm -hmm. um and yeah and so and then so basically the final step right before you get offered the real the offer is you get the interest now like for me this was like december january of my senior year of high school i've already sent in my applications to the schools i already got accepted to oregon state i already got accepted to uc davis because they waved me through and i'm starting to get other acceptance letters from other schools um now it's kind of like official visit time so this is like right before the national signing day and it can actually happen earlier too if they're really interested, but it's an official visit and schools that are, that want to sign you will have you come down to their school and spend a weekend with some of the players. And that's when they give you all the presents. Yeah. That's where you get treated <laughs> like a king. I remember like when you guys would have like a recruit come in. Yeah. It was, it was those are the, that was some of the best weekends uh, because you go, they basically want to like make it look as best and it's as funny possible. because you are on the other side so when you're yeah. a freshman you host um the recruits yeah. and the coach will tell you you know like basically <laughs> i know you're trying to i have to word this. right basically <laughs> show him try a good time. to sh- have him have a very good weekend do whatever he wants to do and get him to come to this school you know so basically whatever schools have the best parties well, it depends because I, so one time we had a kid come in at UC Davis who was not like very, very Christian, very strict. And they said, do not take him out. And so we asked like, what do you want to do with this weekend? It's like, oh, we just played video games. We Like, I just want to play FIFA. So we played video games all weekend. Went to Chipotle, had video games, had a great time. Yeah. But like, we didn't go out because yeah. it was that kid. And the coaches told us like, unless he wants to like, listen to him, but we're pretty sure he's pretty strict. And Christian, yeah, don't take him out. You that know, was, that was fun. I remember when you guys would have recruits. Yeah, so that my senior year, like I went on a recruiting trip to Oregon State, had an amazing, amazing weekend. I love the guys that I stayed with. And this is when all the people come back to their high school with their lanyards and yeah. fling their lanyards around. You get all you, the guys walking through the halls. You with get because you go to the trips. Lanyards. <laughs> you, you basically these trips how they work is you drive or you fly into it. You have to get there on your own dime, but again, it depends on a lot of different circumstances. Um, you go down there 
And basically you just get dropped off with a freshman, a, a couple freshmen, and they have you for the weekend. So you go and you hang out with them. You pretty much, I came like midday. So I went out to lunch with them. We were talking, you know, each other. They're Who like, were you with? Who at, did you go at out with? Davis, Elliot and Aggie. Yeah, yep, that makes sense. Um, and, uh, and then at, da- at Oregon state, I was with, uh, Miguel and I forgot the other guy's name, but they're, they're great guy. I, I like, I, I went there and I, was so I had so much fun because these were such great guys. I just saw myself being friends with both of them. Um, and you go there and basically they like they talk to you. They're like, "Do you have any questions for us?" They show you around. They take you on tours. They show you the training room. They show you the locker room. They show you the field. They take you all around. They take you to a class so you can see classes. Um, they're like, "Are you tired? Do you want to take a nap? Do you want to go out to this?" They they swipe you into the DC so you're getting free food and everything. Um, they're like, oh yeah, we can pay for you over here. We can do this for you. And you just basically kind of get, you get a, a weekend in the life of mm-hmm. these players and you get to see them go to training, you get to watch a training. Sometimes if you're lucky, you get to go and watch a game. If you're there during their season, um, you get to go out with them. If they go out that weekend, you know, you get to just like, if you it, want. it really is cool because you're a high school senior that gets to live in the dorms, sleep in the dorms and, and experience college and not only experience it, but get your hand held and be kind of like anywhere you go. And they'd be like, Hey, this is our recruit, Matt. Like, Oh, nice to meet you. Like, welcome. Do you have any questions? You really are treated very, very well. And it's very exciting. You know, t-shirts, lanyards, everything. UC Davis, UC Davis. Even like not the athletes. Like I remember even me, like we wanted to make the school look good so like everyone's nice yeah, to you yeah like you, you could meet you want to get you meet the athletes. sorority girls and like yeah. oh you better come here yeah. <laughs> like, it's the best <laughs> and so i went to oregon state and uc davis and i i was so torn because i loved the both those schools i love the guys i love both those schools so much I, I could completely see myself at both schools and yeah it was tough it was very tough um but then national signing day comes around and wait before you get to national signing day yeah my last question before that. So for normal people, not the athletes, there is a deadline for applications yeah. and it's like December or something, something in the fall. Yeah. I, I think, know. I don't know. Fall time. I think it depends on the school. Yeah. Um, so what if like you don't apply to a school and then come like January, they're like, Hey, we kind of want to sign you. Like, can you go like, like, back and a lot of schools will, will make it work like for so, athletes okay they can get you in they can wave you in um a lot of times if they can't and the, the school's super strict you know and they can't wave this athlete in what they'll do is they'll say um okay come over here we want to see you with an id camp or or we'll get you to this community college and then we'll walk you through to apply to our school so you can join us in the winter so okay. sometimes they can just get you in a late application. Sometimes they can wave you through. Sometimes they'll work so basically it. Basically rules don't apply to athletes. They do. <laughs> but you have you have inside help to get into the school. There's okay. rules, but you do have inside help. Yeah. Okay. And I'm just joking. It's just funny to me because I'm like the total opposite of this. Like <laughs> I did not go to college for sports. So I had to do everything the traditional way. Yeah. Actually apply, pay the application fee. Mm-hmm you know, take the tests, try to get good grades, study, <laughs> you know, yeah, the, norm, still, the normal way. The normal way. Yeah. So it's um, just funny. But I still got hear. better grades though. Yeah. Weird. Mm. 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 <laughs> I actually applied though. So no, I applied too. Yeah. But you bullshit. But I just knew I was going to get in. Yeah. So it's different. Um, and then, so the final step is, uh, after, and usually this happens after the official visit, cause they mm-hmm. want you to, before they give you an offer, they want you to come in and have that amazing official visit weekend there with the guys. So will you always do a visit if you're going to sign? Not always. Cause it's, it's never always. Cause it's like the same time you could have a guy that you really want signed. It's a late process and you can just like, look, we want you on the team. We'll give you a scholarship or a roster spot, mm-hmm. sign this, let's go, you know? Um, but most of the time I get for most people it's it come to the official visit. And then once you have that amazing weekend, like I had went to Oregon state at the very end of my Oregon state trip, I went into the, I got called into the office with the head coach and they said, Matt, come in here. It was like Simmons, Steve Simmons sat me down. It's like, so how's your weekend? And I was like, oh, this is great. I had an amazing time. Super hungover. <laughs> and he's like, he, they kind of joke about it. Like, did, did you get shown around? Did you have a good weekend? Like, yeah, yeah. it was amazing. I, I really liked it. They asked you if everything's good. And they basically say like, look, um, they give you a little like pitch. And the, the, at Oregon State, it was pretty much like, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. You, as you'll see, this is a Pac-10. This is actually Pac-10 
before it was Pac-12, Pac-10 school. Pac-10 school, you're not going to get any better facilities in the country. Um, we're going to be the, to give you a little spiel about how good the team's going to be, how well you'll be treated, where they see you in the team, and they go. Uh, so we'd love to have you part of like the Oregon State Beaver soccer team, and you get goosebumps. You're so excited, um, and they they don't say make your. Uh, decision now because i think it's illegal if to sign there yeah. or to agree or i don't know the 100 percent rules but they go think about it go home enjoy it if you have any questions we'll be in contact and then they'll call you as soon as you get home they'll talk to your parents do stuff like that right, you know you lock the door <laughs> yeah um and i told the oregon state coach i had an amazing time i, it, I it's really going to be a hard weekend or like a, a very it's going to be very tough to beat oregon yeah. state and I said, I, I can see myself here, but I, I'm going to go out to or UC Davis to visit there. And they're like, yeah, yeah, go, go. But you'll see, you don't have any better facilities than here. And it, we're going to treat you way better. So there's the verbal commitment. Mm -hmm. And then there's the official visit, which is like the next step yeah. of the verbal commitment. Yeah. And that's like, no matter what, we're probably going to sign you. We want to sign you. If they invite you to an official visit, it's a, uh, it's very it's very likely they're going to offer you some form of spot on the team. Not and, a scholarship, but a spot yeah. on the team. And then you're going to decide. Mm -hmm. Do you tell them your answer before signing day? Yes. So it's all set up. Yeah, yeah. Then so signing like, day is just the contract. Yeah, yeah. It's kind when of just is the, for show. When is the scholarship figured out? Um, so they, so when you're in the office, like when I was there, they gave me the offer. Okay. And they basically said, this is the money amount um, that we could be, or I don't know if they, they may have called me later, called my parents and talked about that too. Um, but they basically said, enjoy your weekend down at UC Davis. And we're looking forward to talking to you and having you here at Oregon state next year, you know, kind of like very, yeah. don't worry, like confident. Yeah. And, uh, so I was like, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, I think I'm going to come here, but I'm, I want to visit, go down to Oregon, uh, go down to UC Davis, do the same exact thing, great weekend, hung out with Aggie and Elliot the whole time, had a great time. And it, at that point, like right before that, I was so certain I was going to go to Oregon state. Cause I had such an amazing time and I was like, these, I can see myself here. I went to UC Davis and had equally as amazing time. Loved Aggie and Elliot, loved the guys on the team. Just really enjoyed my time there. Mm -hmm. Um, same thing. Dwayne called me in the office, you know, basically said, we are very interested in you. We're going to offer you a scholarship. We want you to come play here. We see you a part of this 2011 recruiting class. We want you to be an Aggie. You go home. Oh my God. That was so long ago. Yeah. It was that almost was 10 like years ago. No, it is 10 years ago. <laughs> It's over 10 years ago now. Um, and it's then, 2020. And then both coaches are called. over 10 years. It's 2020. Yeah, I know, but oh, I was being recruited he's, in 2010. He's saying in the future. Okay, okay. Huh? Because you said we want you to be part of the 2011. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so anyway, like I, you go back home and the coaches then call your parents and they're kind of like, you know, they're the wine and die. And like, oh, we had such a great time with Matt, such a great guy, you know. Um, and they talk to you again. Like, have you thought about the offer? How the Oregon State coach was like, how was your trip at UC Davis? And I was so, I remember like being so 50-50 torn. Deciding Do you think the that two. the school that you saw last had an advantage since it was fresh in your mind? Maybe a little bit, but. I thought about it so I it wasn't like I forgot about what yeah, happened. Yeah, you like, wanted California. It wasn't that wasn't the thing. It wasn't California. You wanted California. It, to me, honestly, I I was going back and forth. My mom and dad basically just said I, I kept on asking them because they were I was used to them making a lot of the decisions in my life. But this was my first real decision of like this is a hundred percent. I remember for why you. you chose that. I think why? wasn't it because the coach liked you better it was yeah so it was i was so torn and, and you honestly oregon state had better facilities and better because they're pac 12 versus big west um but uc davis and Dwayne liked me and wanted to recruit me from the minute literally the first five minutes of the id camp he pulled me over and had never changed the interest level and oregon state i had emailed two or three times without them replying. I went to an ID camp without them showing interest. And it just felt like finally, once I'd already gotten some hype um, and some coaches wanting me, did they start wanting me? And I could have been completely wrong, but I just felt like in my gut. That, this is like dating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is. But I just was like in my gut, I'm gonna go with the coach that was there from day one who saw potential in me from the very first minute. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> so I chose, I chose UC Davis and, and I might, have, I might have made the wrong decision. Honestly, I could have gone to Oregon State. You met me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I got to weigh the pros and cons. Hey. <laughs> but no, but seriously, you never know. But you just kind of so have no to. there's no right answer. You just have to go with your gut. Your yeah, gut. yeah. Because, I mean, I, I always think about this. I, I've i literally thought about this a ton. I could have gone to Oregon State, played every single game as well. But it's in front of more people, played in front of Stanford, played in front of all this stuff. And 
we got into the tournament or something and I could get got in um, re- re- drafted by the MLS and I could have had an MLS career, you know, my foot into the MLS. That could have been my pathway in. But just as easily, I could have gone there and had a dispute with the coach or I could have just like fell out of love with the way the trainings were set up or Someone whatever. Someone could have been better. Someone could have been better, started over me. If it exists. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I could have, they could, I could have came yeah. in and then, cause I got lucky with Davis getting a starting spot right away. And at Oregon state, I might not have started till but junior, senior know. year. And I could have quit or I could have just had a normal, like you never know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, you just got to go. You really do. I just, I honestly it was a flip of the coin. I went with my gut I chose it and I still don't know if it's the right or the wrong decision, but you never know. know. Yeah. Um, and that, and so then you, I called at that point I decided it was like January, end of January. I called Dwayne at UC Davis and I said, I want to be an Aggie. You know, I want to come to your school and he goes, awesome. We're excited to have you. I'll send you the national letter. Did you say, what is an Aggie? (laughs) (laughs) He said, he was like, Matt, he's like, Matt, we, you know, it's ecstatic to hear. We're so happy to have you. You know, we've been recruiting you for a long time. We'll send, we'll send you the national letter of intent. You sign it and, uh, welcome to the program. You just, again, goosebumps and everything. And then you have the hard part of calling the Oregon state coach and the Gonzaga coach and the other coaches and telling them if you're lucky enough to have multiple offers, if you're lucky enough. And so and you have to do it though, because you don't want to burn bridges. And so, cause you could go there, hate it, and then want to transfer to Oregon yeah. state. So I called the Oregon state coach said, unfortunately, um, I want to go with a big, be an Aggie at UC Davis. And he goes, man, I thought you had a great trip over here. You know, try to guilt trip you a little bit. And I was like, I was like, be strong, be strong. <laughs> You're so bad at this. I, know, I, I, I don't know. know how you got through these phone honestly, calls. I'm surprised you didn't commit to three schools. Honestly, a little bit of me was just like, change your mind, go to Oregon state. Cause I was so 50, 50. He's so bad. And, at when he's, and, the, and the thing was like, I wanted to go with the, the coach. I thought that showed more interest. And when he was like, no, are you serious? We wanted you. We recruited and you so like, much. Wait a minute. <laughs> so I, I was like, no, I've thought about this a lot. I, I'm going to be an Aggie. Like, I'm sorry. And I was like, okay, well, you know, enjoy it down there. But I'm sure like, kind of like you will miss out at the Pac-12 or Pac-10 school yeah. here. And when you, if you do, then you have my number, you know, and then you call the other schools and everything. And, and they're usually at the lower, the D2 schools, D3, are like, okay, yeah, you know, have a great time over there and then um you sign it in your privacy of your own home the national letter of intent send it off to the school and then you have your actual the showcase signing Wait, so at that's the school a fake? That's a it's fake a fake yeah what? yeah i mean what? maybe sometimes it's not sometimes they probably do sign the real one but for me in my situation i signed it faxed it over and then we printed off another copy to sign for fake at the school oh my god so you're there in front of the school signing it but it's, it's, it's cool because that just signing it it's like years and years of work to get it so but that's like how the recruiting process usually goes of course it always changes and it never ends like if you miss the signing day they're still recruiting like you can sign your national letter of intent june end of your season they're recruiting all year long every day and even players like i that have uh that like i know players that signed for uc or not signed um got into uc davis as a student and then after their senior year right before they're going into uh into Davis as, as the freshman, they're attending an ID camp and the coach goes and they literally go, wait, so you're already coming here. Like, yeah, I'm already in. And they go, well, you're a pretty good player. Let's have you into preseason, you know, and there's walk-ons and there's, there's a whole bunch of stuff. So it never ends. It's just like, if you missed, if I would have missed the, the signing day, I would have just kept on trying to get a national letter of intent or an invite into a preseason or, or whatever. And you got to keep your grades up even if you get an offer and you're in. Yes. It doesn't just stop. Because like, if you, you gotta, fail. You got to end yeah. high school on a good note. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't graduate, if you, if you fail out, they can rescind the, the national letter of intent. Yeah. Um, but yeah, does that, is that clear though? Do you feel like you could I feel like apply? I have the ability and the mm-hmm. skills. <laughs> the skill. and now I have the knowledge. <laughs> To get into college, Sorry. perfect. You have the you have the foot. You have all the technical skills, the yeah. technical knowledge. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually really enjoyed this because I feel like you would have skipped over a lot of stuff yeah. if I didn't ask you because I genuinely don't know the answer. That's to why these I wanted because I I would have for sure skipped. You over. wanted me because I didn't know anything. Yeah, so I was stupid. <laughs> no, no, not because you're stupid because you you've never done this before. Well, now I have a plethora of soccer knowledge that I will never need in my <laughs> entire life for as long as I live. But um, if you guys enjoyed this, let us know. And also let us know what you want him to talk about next. Mm-hmm. I'll ask him more questions about it. And if we forgot anything, comment 
and maybe we'll do another one or you can yeah. answer them. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then last thing, I mean, there, I have lots of these little like stories of my, of my life that I could go over like a yeah. story time and, and like also, uh, like for example, how I went over to Germany and like the behind the scenes process of actually getting to Germany mm -hmm. or like the, my open trials that I went to, to go to uh, like Iceland. I could talk about Iceland. I could talk about a lot of things. So like, yeah. So we'll, yeah. we might just do like, like, you know, a focused podcast. Yeah. We might keep on mixing it up. So, so again, let us know if you like the Q and A's, if you like this, if you like the other ones. And you should also link um the videos about college soccer that might mm. help that you've made because you've made a bunch of that's them. a good point so in the description if i remember <laughs> which you have to remind me I if i remember there will be the how to make a highlight video how to make a cv and how to get recruited to college soccer i made a full video about that too this was just way more in depth I way think. more yeah because the college soccer one was like 10 15 minutes yeah um and i think there's one more i did but yeah all right guys we'll so anyway it. this was the against all odds podcast focused topic uh, and again, once again, thank you to chaos soccer gear for sponsoring this podcast. That's C H A O S soccer gear.com. All right, guys. Peace. Peace.